Like I was telling you before, sometimes you get lucky and you don't need an adjustment. What you're looking at is a Honda J-Series V6. We have the valve covers off. Here, is your, here are your intake valves. Down here are your exhaust valves. These need to be adjusted about every 100,000 miles. When you do the uh, timing belt, water pump, tensioners, pulleys, you should also go in here and do the uh, valve adjustment as well. I'll put a picture of it up right now, but you only do the adjustment when the engine is cold, right? And valve, the Honda calls it valve lash. For the intake, it's 0.22 plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. On the exhaust, it's uh, 0.30 plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. So it's not a whole lot of uh, room to play with. But one thing I like to do before I do the adjustment, you have six cylinders here. Each cylinder has two intakes, two exhausts, right? So, so in total on each side, on the front head and the rear head, you have 24 adjustments you need to make. One thing I like to do before we go in there is actually measure how much valve lash you have. Because sometimes, sometimes you get lucky and you don't have to adjust it. But most of the time you do. Okay, so the intake calls for 0.22 millimeters, right? And I have a feeler gauge here. I'm going to show this to you. I picked this up on the Snap-on truck. These are actually made for dirt bikes, but I just like the way they were made and the feel of them. So right here we have in millimeters, 0.229 millimeters, or in inches is 0 0.009, right? So I use that for the intake. And for the exhaust, you can see 0 0.305 millimeters, or in inches, it's 0 0.012. These are the two feeler gauges that I use for the intake and exhaust valves when I adjust the valve lash on Honda J-Series V6s. I'll put some links down in the description below. But I also want to tell you, if you want to you know, see me do this, an actual adjustment, uh, I'll put links down there as well. I'm actually not going to adjust these, okay? Like I was telling you before, sometimes you get lucky and you don't need an adjustment. And I like to do this before I adjust it. Because if you don't need to adjust this, don't adjust it. If it's fine the way it is, don't touch it. You don't need to mess with it. It's better to leave these alone than actually go in there and adjust it and run the risk of getting it wrong. I've had a couple guys, you know, try to do it on their own. They can't. They give me a call. I come out and adjust it for them. So this is the intake. Obviously, the intake valves are closer to your intake. All the exhaust valves are closer to your exhaust. I always check them. So I have my 0 .22, 0 .9, 0 .20, point twenty two point nine. Yeah, I have my 20... 0.22.9 feeler gauge here and I'll take it and just slide it underneath the adjustment right it's right there okay sitting right there and I really can't move the guide at all so I'm not going to touch that I'm not going to I'm not going to adjust this at all I'm not going to mess with this at all go to the other side slip it underneath here And it's good. Take the feeler gauge out. You can hear them. But they're perfect. Right now, the way they stand, they're perfect. Let me show you the tools that I actually do use when I am doing the adjustment. So all you need when you actually do the adjustment, you, these are all 10 millimeter bolts, right? So I have an offset 10 millimeter wrench. I go in here, I'll break this loose. I'm not going to do it now. Just break it loose, ready, tighty, lefty, loosey. And then once you go in there, you get the feeler gauge in there. You, I always do this by hand. I know they make tools and stuff, but I'll back the nut off, right? Move it up. And then the actual adjustment is made by this little knob right here, which is right there. And I'll, once that's loose, you can actually turn it by hand. And I'll turn this by hand with my feeler gauge in there and I'm pulling my feeler gauge back and forth. And once I feel a little bit of drag, that's when I'll adjust it down. And when you adjust it down, if this was, if this is where you want to lock the, the nut in, I'll ever so slightly go back a little bit because when the nut gets locked down, it's going to put pressure back onto the actual adjustment and make it tighter than what it actually is. So hopefully that makes sense. So if you're, this is going to be exaggerated. So if I was here, okay, if this is where I want it, right? 
I'll take the stem back a little bit counterclockwise, say right there, and then crank it down and lock the nut in because then it'll actually adjust it to where I exactly want it to be. It'll make more sense when you guys get in there. So that one I'm not going to touch. My .305. You come down here. You guys see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. Bring my other feeler gauge down in here onto the exhaust. And when you do this, when you actually adjust the valves, make sure you get the correct feeler gauge. Okay, it's in there. It's in place. It's dragging a little bit. It's perfect. If I take this, if I take the filler gauge out, you'll actually be able to hear the valve moving. Okay, that side's perfect, and this side is perfect as well. I've already checked these, but I just want to show you guys. I just want to make a quick video. If your intake and exhaust valves do not need adjustment on the J series, don't adjust them. Just leave them alone. So there, I have it in place. Feel some drag. Pull it out. You can hear it. So these are perfect. Cylinder number five is perfect. I'm not going to touch it. Like I said, I'll put some links down in the description below on how I actually adjust these, how to do it correctly. But uh, if, it, it, if the valves look like this, the feeler gauge is dragging a little bit, when you use the correct size, don't adjust them. Just leave them alone. Move on to the next one. So there you go. Just a quick tip from Bunny's Garage. If you have any questions, you can always email me at bunniesgarage at gmail.com, and I will talk to you guys later.